My name is uh, Dr. Geit Sante. I'm a clinical geneticist in the Leiden University Medical Center in the Netherlands, in Leiden. And I work on Arid 1B since uh, about 10 years, and I'm scientific advisor for uh, FAR. I, I think this is a tremendously exciting time uh, for research in genetics, and, and especially also in, in the treatment of genetic diseases. There are now a couple of uh, treatments available, for example, for uh, spinal muscular atrophy, which are really uh, spectacular. There are techniques that didn't exist for uh, a decade ago with regards to uh, genetic engineering, so also making things possible that we couldn't dream of uh, years ago. And with a couple of these uh, treatments being available, I think the next steps in developing more and similar treatments are relatively small. Ik wil even een beetje beschermen, volgens mij zelfs, hè? When it comes to uh, therapeutics for arid one b I think that uh, recent advances in uh, genetic studies in particular have shown that there is a potential to repair the underlying gene defect. And there have been several treatments developed and are now in, in practice used for genetic conditions. So it is conceivable that it is possible to restore arid one b function. However, what we of course don't know is what the consequences is of that. If you go for the most optimistic uh, scenario, then restoring arid one b function, it, it's not going to take away what has already happened in, in development. So if a, if a child, for example, uh, would have a heart defect, th that is not going to change uh, because you restore the arid one b protein function. But what could potentially happen is that brain function might improve because specific deficiencies of neurons might be uh, restored because you uh, restore gene function. We don't know if it will, but we know that, for example, from mouse studies, that the brain is very plastic, which means that it, can, it, it has a lot of regenerative potential. And of course, we also know this from people who have brain injuries, etc., that the brain can still make new connections and restore function. So it's conceivable that, for example, behavioral issues might improve if, if they're there. It might improve learning. It might improve uh, learning skills such as uh, speech. I think there's an important role for uh, parent-led organizations in uh, determining sort of the research agenda. What they can do is they can push pharma companies and researchers into developing things and making a case for why this particular disease should be developed. And they can also show that they, can, they are able to bring uh, patients to the trials if these trials eventually emerge, to so, so sort of make the disease trial ready as it were. When FAR approached me, you know, I was very um, uh, impressed by the level of knowledge they had already uh, generated and the context they have made, for example, with industry. This makes me hopeful that there, there could be some uh, results in the near future. And if, if I would then be able to, uh, to contribute to that, then, of, you know, of course, I'm willing.